Sarah, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return. It's great to see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. How does it feel to be back in the crowd and the in-person event again? Oh, it's great. It's um, it's great to see uh, see things busy and see lots of old faces. Um, I'm sort of one of those old school people who really uh, definitely Gen X prefer to do things face to face, and it's it's been really great. It's been a challenging period, hasn't it, for yep. everybody? What would you say were the key impacts on this industry, and you know what what will be the ongoing effects, if you like, too? Look, I, I think that we've all adapted really well, and so you know um, a lot of us were scrambling um, when the lockdowns first started in March of last year uh, to assess impact on the portfolios. Um, you know, then the, the the central bank response to it much more quickly. Um, then what happened in the financial crisis was to um, was to print money, um, and so I, I think a lot of businesses, obviously, um, if we look at our, if we looked at our um, Q4 uh, valuations, there was a, there was a lot of recovery coming through by then. I think you know in, in terms of the way we do things, you know, I think there's been positives and negatives. I think, but I think we've really improvised pretty well, and I think you know, whereas I used to spend half my life flying around. Um, in a plane, uh, I think we've all just realised that that's that's unnecessary. Um, you know, not a good use of time, not good for carbon footprint. Um, and while nothing will replace face-to-face -face meetings, and you know, when you're getting to know people, and especially if you're doing direct investing and getting to know management teams, I think it's absolutely critical. And that has still been happening, although it's been much more difficult. Uh, you know, there's a lot more that can. Um, efficiently be done over technology that's been proven and demonstrated to work really very well. So, so those are sort of practical changes of how the industry is actually operating. Yeah. But in terms of the impact of COVID, obviously there was that initial period of uncertainty, but actually it's been a pretty good time for private capital. Tell me about that and what you've seen. Yeah, so we've, what, what we can see in terms of portfolio, anything that was, um, you know, um, sort of hotel, leisure, um, hospitality um, businesses, some of them, you know, it, it continues to be difficult. But, um, you know, there's been huge um, swaths of money going into um, software and tech enabled services, which have had very significant tailwinds out of um, out of what's happened. Um, and also healthcare, you know, as certain certain pockets of healthcare, in particular CDMOs, um, as uh, you know, healthcare and pharma to some extent looks to um, re onshore or near shore uh, some of their supply chains. So there's been um, some really interesting pockets of activity. And I think, you know, everyone, and we, we just discussed it on our panel, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a time to be cautious um, uh, because pricing is very high. I know you described it, I like the analogy of you've got to be careful you're backing a, a racehorse and, and not a donkey because the valuations yeah. are so high. Tell me about that and what the caution needs to be applied at the moment. Yeah, so I, I st I've stolen that quote from somebody else and she said, she said yeah, if, you're, um, if, if, you, if you have to pay for a racehorse, then make sure you get a racehorse and not a donkey. And I think, um, you know, for us, we're not direct investors. We always work with partners. So it comes down to, um, you know, picking a partner who has an extensive track record of um, value creation, managing through different cycles and um, periods of difficulty um, within a particular sector and they have a value creation, I call it the sausage machine, um, you know, where it's, um, you know, repeatable steps um, to support ongoing business growth and management teams within particular sector verticals. Um, I was going to say, to, so is sector specialisation important in that sense as well? To me, to me it is. Um, and, you know, I think in, in um, the US being a big homogeneous market lends itself very well in private equity to very niche um, sector specialisation, which, you know, um, Europe, and I also cover Asia, are not, not homogeneous uh, in the same way. Um, but there are certainly the types of managers we deal with typically um, you know, they might not focus on just one narrow sector, but they might um, have uh, various sector teams that sit um, on the platform who, you know, there's absolutely no way we'd pay a, you know, a really big number um, for a very nice business with an excellent management team 
um, in, in software if, if the underlying partner has no experience with software. And some are saying that the, the juxtaposition, if you like, is that that specialization is important, but what we've seen with COVID is that actually differentiation in the portfolio is as important as it ever was. I mean, what was, so absolutely what we're doing is, is not putting all, all of our eggs in one basket. So, you know, um, when I think about the things that we've invested in this year across different geographies, it has been some of the sort of more, uh, you know, some, some of the very high growth assets with some of the larger um, price tags that, you know, very like double digit growth, big margins, big cash flow conversion. Um, but also, again, um, partnering with the, with, with the right people um, to continue to drive um, you know, value creation through the whole period. But also we're, um, we've done stuff in industrials um, and you know, more, uh, more difficult uh, businesses that are facing um, t you know, perhaps some degree of complication or a turnaround. Um, and again, it, it comes down to who, who we're partnering with to do that. But absolutely, um, uh, you know, w w one of the businesses we bought um, had, had a much, uh, I think it was like a five, uh, it was, there was a five point something uh, in terms of the handle on the EBITDA multiple. So completely the other end of the spectrum to, you know, some of the other hotter sectors. And when you, you talked about value creation there, there's some interesting sort of dynamics in that at the moment in that you could say that you know, obviously risk management is, is, is almost inbuilt into that value creation. And one of those aspects is environment at the moment as well. Yeah. That's, that's really coming to the fore, isn't it? And we're seeing lots of conversations about that here. Yes, absolutely. And that's increasingly important um, to us and um, at, at, at all stage. Uh, and we are very focused. Um, and, you know, since I, I started a bit more than a year ago, and it's just been a vertical almost um, curve that we're going up. Uh, and you know, internally, the organization is working across all the asset classes to find um, ways to uh, benchmark different levels of, uh, and come up with KPIs to, to hold everyone in the investment team accountable. It's, and it's a matter of what data can consistently be um, collected. And additionally, um, we're in the midst of opening up a separate pool of capital uh, to invest in sustainability with the key thematics being around um, diversity and inclusion and, um, and also um, climate change. So, yeah, and you know, we're still uh, pulling, uh, the, the strategy is, is still, still something that's in a formulation phase, but it's definitely um, to be backing those key thematics uh, in, in a private market context. And this is perhaps a great opportunity reputationally for this industry to be the good guys, isn't it, as well, in those terms? Absolutely. And it's, um, I think it's about, you know, for us, um, yeah, it's about being, um, a, a, you know, good corporate citizens and it's good for branding, absolutely. But it's, um, you know, these, these, are, these are real issues. Like we're an insurance company. We're, um, you know, we're affected by um, climate change and catastrophic events, you know, it's, it's, um, it's important for all of us. And how good is it to be able to come to an event like this again, to, to share the ideas and collaborate in terms of those things as well? Because you talked about having measures and models, you know, if you can talk to other companies and find out who's doing it well, that must be really valuable too. Uh, absolutely it is. And yeah, it's, uh, I think what you sort of um, hear, uh, you know, across the dinner table or at a cocktail party, um, you know, that's that you, you pick up some very uh, important um, news and information and, uh, you know, different ways of doing things, the way different organizations are viewing these things and um, doing things um, better than we are, perhaps, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's that great collaboration's to hear. great. Great to hear that you're having useful conversations here. Nice to Absolutely. talk to you, Sarah. Thanks Thank you so much. Us. Thank you.